Welcome to GP Bullhound's Tech Thoughts, a weekly overview of economic developments in international markets. Hello and welcome to GP Bullhound's Tech Thoughts. Today is the 25th of November and we are here with Inge Haydorn and Jenny Hardy for our weekly market roundup. Today, they will cover analog devices results, what we're seeing in the smartphone and PC market, the European and Taiwanese chip acts, and some good gaming news. Over to them. Thank you, Maria. Uh, it's Inge Hedon here from uh, the fund management team of GP Bullhound. Hi there, it's Jenny Hardy, portfolio manager at GP Bullhound. If we start with the market, let's keep it short today, uh, as it's been a short week. Um, but I think the head thing this week, or the key thing this week, was really the highlights from the Fed notes, uh, taking down uh, expectations a little bit of, of uh on the rate hikes from 75 to 50 basis points, uh, dragging the dollar weaker and the markets up a little bit so far this week. We'll see. We have a shortened trading day today. But still, a lot of tech news. Um, and I think stability is the word of the week. So let's Yeah, start with... although not stability on Sunday night no. with uh, Disney. No, let's start with that. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about that? Oh, I mean, so so Bob Iger is back um, and Bob Chapek is out. Um, uh, I suppose surprising and not surprising, right? I mean, I think Iger, um, yeah, clearly, I, I, I think had been pretty vocal about not necessarily supporting the direction that Disney had, had been going in and not necessarily supporting the new leadership, although he, he did pretty much pick the new leadership. So, um, and I, I suppose looking forward, it's not totally clear to me what Bob Iger is going to do differently. I mean, he kind of set up the business to go all in on uh, Disney Plus and streaming. Um, he obviously bought 21st Century Fox but before he left. And so, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what... Uh, what he's going to do dramatically differently. And and obviously Chapek was dealt a bit of a bad hand in terms of timing and, and COVID. So I don't know. Let's see. What, what what do you think? I think he was, Bob, sadly enough, got into a wrong start there with, you know, delaying the comments regarding, you know, HPQ laws in, in Florida and so on. And, and it sounded like, we don't know, we're not inside Disney, it's, but it sounded like the top management didn't really like him and he was not popular mm. and thereby a change needed to be done. Is he eager the guy to do it? Question mark, question mark, I would say. As you said, Jenny, two, two years is his contract and uh, let's see. I, I think given that two years moves really, really fast, it's almost time to start looking for his successor already now, I would mm. say. Yeah, mm. exactly. And, and I guess that's what... Um... That's what he'll do. But uh, I mean, I suppose for, from our perspective, we were obviously disappointed in the results uh, last quarter and sort of disappointed in, in the kind of path to profitability in the streaming business. Again, um, whether he reneges back on some of those big investments, let's see. But I really don't think that that's kind of the, the, how he set up the business um, three years ago. No, uh, uh, so I, I would say our conclusion is a little bit wait and see with this one and see what it takes us. But uh, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, I think that's the best thing you can do in, in this case, I think. And as you said, we are slightly disappointed with their spending patterns and so on in Disney. So, but back to stability. Uh, yeah, back to stability <laughs> and and ADI numbers and. I think before we start to go into AD numbers, I just want to highlight, if anybody has some time, read the transcript from the call. It's just amazing when ADI is out using the word stability around their order intake and order book, and mm. it sounds like nobody believes them. And uh, and the question is asked over and over again during the quarter. But I would say, I don't think it really stands out, ADI. I think they're guiding quarter on quarter roughly flat, which most semiconductor companies do mm -hmm. order books are coming down a little bit from most people as we are working out uh, the order backlog and so on so i don't think it was uh, like a weird number at all no no and i think I, I suppose the difference is really the the sort of change in tone from last quarter because 
yeah, if you remember, they were kind of one of the first ones to, to really sort of flag a, a potential slowdown, um, I suppose, back in August now. And and so I think, you know, it, it, again, I, I think it's more the sort of change, change of tone of um, actually, you know, now seeing or, orders stabilise where they had seen kind of elevated cancellation levels and um, more of a slowdown. So I think that the sort of change in rhetoric is is interesting there. So I think things are getting better and not worse, which is is good. Yeah, and uh, as we have highlighted quite a, a lot here, is that the automotive is uh, probably the most stable part, if we use the word mm-hmm. stable here. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and and they're benefiting from from that electrification trend, albeit they're clearly not not as exposed as um, some of the the names that we own in the space. And when we, we use the word stability, let's go into the handset market, which is not known for being really stable here in the last nine months, really probably the worst marketplace uh, in terms of a, a falling knife and demand. We had the Xiaomi uh, reporting, uh, which is really the number one in China now after all the problems Huawei has had, uh, really stating that, firstly, that the the volumes were up quarter on quarter by 3%, so 40.4 million. But even more importantly, saying that uh, demand in China has normalized and inventory levels in China has normalized, which mm. is a really positive sign, if, if true. Yeah, it, it, exactly. So that kind of, particularly the, the low-end smartphone market has clearly been in in real pain this year and i think they they commented that shipments were at their lowest level lowest q3 level in nine years which is pretty extraordinary so i think to be very clear you know things are things have, have been bad um but as you said the comments around inventory were more positive and china seems to be clearing india um, looks like we might be kind of most of the way through that correction, um, maybe maybe a bit further behind. But I think certainly signs of, of stability in that market. Yeah, and, and the important thing here is also the timing of the stability is the fact that we are now going into Christmas season in, in the Western world and, and thereby very important for, for Christmas sales. But for the Chinese vendors and the Chinese inventories, uh, the Chinese New Year is, is a much more important, and that's where all the volume goes through. And that's normally end of January, beginning of February. So going in with an uh, with a inventory which is healthy is going to help the market a lot uh, in, in China. So I, I would say that's really, really positive news. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there still isn't any good news in the PC market, though. No, it doesn't seem like that way. We had Dell HP reporting this week, and uh, uh, it's still falling on the consumer side. Uh, Corporate side is holding up decently well, down single digit, but the consumer side is really, really tough. But with that said, I would say that the low-end consumer side is the worst hit, the Chromebooks and, and so on. So it's it's a positive ASP effect if we uh, if we take the positive yeah. side of it. Yeah, and I think some of the U.S. retailers have spoken spoken um, to that as well. Um, clearly, yeah, consumers are um, having having a tough time. Then going into politics, uh, and uh, we talked about the U.S. Ship Act here quite a lot, but uh, let's talk about the European one and the Taiwanese one then. And, and let's, let's start with the Taiwanese one. It's kind of going to be quite small, but that was, so say... Uh, what, what do you call it, gone through their par- parliament on the 17th of November and approved. Uh, it's quite small. So if you buy equipment, for example, you get a 5% discount uh, uh, transferred over the tax. Uh, but it's still good news. And it's, yeah, it's, absolutely. it's, it's helpful. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I think there, there are a number of, um, number of, of uh, semi companies that will benefit. Maybe they didn't really need, um, didn't necessarily need uh, the incentives, but nevertheless helpful. Yeah, yeah. And the European one, that, that's clearly much, much bigger. And we're, we're now in the 40 billion euro levels here uh, talking. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's quite a lot of money. We have already seen 
countries going out subsidizing factories like uh, the Intel factory in Italy and so on. But now it definitely seems like they're pushing through this European Ships Act quite aggressively and quite fast and will be printed into law, I think it was until 1st of January or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it gets passed uh, next month. Um, but yeah, and, and, and I think, yeah, we've obviously seen some some quite big commitments from, um, well, the Intel is the one that stands out, who, who in March um, came out and said it would spend, I think, 80 billion euros um, over the next decade and um, a, a, and announced that it would build uh, leading edge fabs in, in Europe as well. And I think we've had the, the sort of conversation before around um, whether Europe can be successful in leading edge or whether indeed it makes sense for them to go after yeah. um, leading edge manufacturing. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, it, it's going to be very, very close uh, at uh, call to say if, if they're going to be successful or not because it, it's finding engineers being uh, uh, leading edge in Europe, which has never happened before. So it, it's it's, bit, it's really tight. And we also talked about the Infineon factory that was released now in the end of October, oh, end of November when they reported that the 5 billion. So it's a lot of people that want to build factories, but the leading edge were a little bit more skeptical about it say if that's really going to be a, a way forward in your but um, yeah. if, if, if we're going to spend money on it so let's do it um, yeah exactly and, and and actually kind of looking at the at the european working documents it looks like it's not restricted to leading edge so i think they talk about first of a kind technology which can obviously be kind of read in quite a lot of different ways so we know infineon is investing in um, silicon carbide, which you can argue that that on the materials side is a sort of first in, in, in its kind technology. So I'm sure there might be more. Um, yeah, it, it, it sounds like uh, there may well be more kind of lagging edge developments coming out of Europe, which I think probably makes more sense uh, in terms of the industries that require that. Yeah. And the last bit of good news today then, uh, on the gaming side, we've been arguing about around the market being weak and so on, and uh, the needs to be, so to say, and the focus will be on the leading products this year, so the leading releases, so Call of Duty, uh, and now we have Gods of Ragnarok out, and we have the new Pokemon uh, program out from... from uh, Nintendo. And the interesting thing here is that if you take Activision's first three days of sales was like $800 million. If you now take the Pokemon sales for Nintendo, 10 million copies in three days, that leaves us around $500 million. So that's also very, very strong and the biggest release, fastest release ever for Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And then you have the biggest release ever from Sony's own studios for PlayStation first and meaning 5.1 million gods of Ragnarok in the first five days. So if you have a strong product in gaming, it is selling, but yeah. it's tough to be number two, number three in this marketplace with not as good product. And then oh, the, the general climate is tough. Yeah. Yeah. But no, good, good news for uh, Nintendo and Sony, which, which we own. So that's good. Yeah, and especially for Nintendo, the 10 million is just a, a phenomenal number. And I, I looked at Farmitsu numbers uh, last night and I saw that they sold 2.4 million in the first day in, in Japan. Mm. Uh, and now the total success of Splatoon is at 3.4, which was amazingly successful in yeah. last quarter. So 2.4 million in one day versus 3.4 in, in, in a quarter. So it's, it's an amazing number for Nintendo. So yeah, uh, definitely. That, good news. Yeah, and 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 you obviously have the the Switch supply recovering, which which bodes well for for the sell through as well. Yeah, perfect. That's all for this week, Yannu. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. You.